Yeah, well, you know, uh, what's it, the, uh, the, the United States Post Office used to say? Uh, neither rain, sleet, or snow will stop us, you know, or however it went, you know. A little, little misty drizzle won't stop us from getting that concrete pour tomorrow. It's going to be tight, though. I think what's going to happen is it's going to be waves going to through. And so right now it's not raining, so we'll hop on up top and work outside. And then when it, then when it starts coming down, we'll all run in here and we'll do the bracing. That kind of like a good plan. Uh, I'll let Boone take credit for that because he did it. But it's like uh, an exo truss, you know, where it, uh, it distributes the load from the concrete pushing. It distributes the load um, out and back. So it's really cool, cool design that he did. And uh, it's really strong too, so because we have nothing we can brace to on the ground, because typically you just run a brace back. I didn't even think of that, and he knocked it out real quick. And so he'll probably have to do one over here, and maybe one on the backside. So that was really cool thinking. And over over here, all those beams that they're making over here, those putting those two by fours together, they're going to be laid out over these beams, not this direction, to support the house over that subfloor. So the main house will be supported all the way out to the end of those beams. So. This is half of the hall that sitting over. Yeah. And the rock is down to the ground. And that ground corner, that entire corner will be exposed. So it will be pretty darn cool. But we just need to know where to stop the rock lug coming on out. So the rock lug will come out six inches, right? And it'll go over to where the, the next pole starts. With the column that goes up two stories. But that rock column is going to start all the way down and come all the way up. And so this is going to stick over six inches. It'll we come over. Oh. Well, once you set this corner, yeah. when you come around and you get the right um, size and come over here, mm -hmm. from here I'll be able to measure over exactly where it's at. Because okay. I don't know exactly where that is right now. Cut this off, right? Just right here? Yeah, just cut it off and then he's put the <clears> board on this. And then we'll come along with a piece of plywood on top of it. So it's gonna go down and in. Yeah, so cut these cut these tops off, right? Mm -hmm. Put your batter boards up flush against this. Okay. And that right there is uh, pretty darn close to the rock load. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so the rock's gonna be underneath. Nope. Okay. So, so once you put your batter boards on this, mm -hmm. you lay a piece of you know, a little piece of ply. It'll be seven inches wide. Yeah. And it'll run the length until we try to stop. So this comes on up here, and then concrete pours here and out, and so the rock sits on top of this right here. Okay, so there's going to be another wall right here, and that's where the rock plug is up here? Yeah, no, it's just going to be flush. Okay. And it's, this is going to be a lower pour, because this is a porch, right? Yeah. So we're going to have it step down um, an inch or two. So if any rain gets on it, it'll shed off. And this will be a broom finish for the porch. Okay. And actually, the porch actually goes in a little bit. Okay. So that makes sense? Bob that off straight. Bob that one off. Probably, probably is one, two, three, four of them. Um, probably right where you get to that batter board sticking up. That's getting pretty close to being correct because the rock look goes all the way down <coughs> around there. Make sense? Robert and then we're working on the rebar, uh, putting it up. Uh, we had Boone inside doing a little bit of the bracing. We started the outside batter boards for the foundation on the house over here. Pours Tuesday. Uh, we're gonna hustle today, get the rest of the bracing in. They're gonna finish up the steel. We gotta put the rest of the batter boards up there, then make sure everything's all nice and tight, and braced down and ready to go. And um, 
should be interesting. Hopefully it doesn't rain too much tomorrow and uh, yeah. Yeah, I would I would assume over there's the best. Yeah, that's what I'm Here's your 10 footer. I'm gonna order some more uh, quarter inch plate. This is three eighths plate. Okay. I'll come up with a list of stuff. Okay. So you can be a busy boy. Yeah, you better. You know, over the next week and a half. Busy, 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 busy. Yeah, I mean, Justin, Justin threw his back out. So, so yeah. All right. There's that. So one, two, three, go. <laughs> <laughs> he got, you got it all. Make it happen, Captain. Yes, sir. I'm probably gonna have to push the frame through back a week, which is really, 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 really annoying. Because looking at the plans, we're gonna need just about all of these in relatively short order. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell the guys. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get um, Senior Lar out here. Okay. Because he could technically start on the bottom section down there. Right. And the top portion. I mean, it, that's at least a week or we can have to work. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll get him going on that. Probably, probably. But he's going to need all of these done effectively in short order. Okay. And so I'm also going to get with um, Shannon and Justin and have a couple brackets made. I'm also going to order certain steel I beams that we talked about. Yeah. But what our big holdup is is we got to get every single one of these planed. Okay. Um, now there's a, there's like 15 to 20 of them that don't need to be there the, for the next floor. Okay. But it's really kind of convoluted and everything's out of order so, right. so it's gonna be really much. tough to like well, let's not do these and those right. i mean i'll come up with a list of exactly where everything goes okay. um anyhow this one turned out pretty good it does have some gaps yeah and the ideas on these is we're going to um put a uh, a clear coat gloss on them yeah. and leave it nice exposed wood and what's so cool i like is that it's got multiple colors yeah i think it's going to be it's gonna really going to pop you're going to see it seal you're going to see all this in the ceiling after we do this concrete pour tomorrow probably put about three dudes on this okay working on nothing but these getting these done and then once he gets those things cut, guys will bring it outside and they'll spray it or roll it with uh, the clear coat. Okay. And maybe you can do the repair work that needs to be done Definitely. on things like that. Definitely. So Shannon's going to need help, help moving stuff around, cutting them, cutting them, cutting them, doing all that stuff, getting okay. them out here. And I think if we spray them down, we coat them down good, mm -hmm. what, what that means is that all of a sudden now, when it's under construction for the next three or six weeks, and it's not dried in, as it rains on it, we won't get the swelling because this is already swelling and getting out of... Yeah. Out of... Uh, I don't want to call it perfection, but yeah. out of smoothness. Before we get it out there, we could put like urethane on it. Yeah. So it's for outdoor. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. All right. So that's the big plan. Next week, we can uh, probably Robert and uh, maybe Big Mike and, and, pa and, and Pablo, they can start working on this pool steel. Okay. And I'll show them what to do on that. Okay. And that, that kind of break it up. And then we can have maybe one guy oh. tearing down forms. Yeah. Um, just getting out of the way. And it, nothing comes down inside the, the wine room. It's got to stay there for for two weeks, three weeks, okay. holding everything up. Yeah. Uh -huh. But we can tear down the backside, you know, get it out of the way of the framers. Reveal the wall. Yeah, <gasps> wall revealing party. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can do that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> concrete in 18 hours and we still got to do another whole layer of steel and uh, almost got the uh, all the wiring done because you got to imagine this would be a concrete lid and now um, I got to get all the lights through the through the concrete so all the wiring distribution is going over there so when the you know, concrete's poured you can't just like a normal wood framed house you can't just put wires down through the uh, through the floor so you got to pre-plan all that and over there in the corner I almost forgot the shower and so I did the toilet and I was like oh <laughs> we almost didn't have a shower because you can't you can't uh, do it later. It has to be net, done now, and all the P trap and everything's got to be put in. So I'll show you what I'm doing over there in a second. So Mike, each one of these gray conduits is a three quarter inch conduit, and it's all going back to the corner over there because I have I have light switches, I have you know normal electrical boxes, you know plugs. And uh, all the switches have got to be able to turn on each individual lights, you know. And so what I've done is, is I put it all in one corner, so that when we run the electricity to it, we'll have one room on a one breaker or maybe two breakers, and it'll all be one spot. So this room is all coordinated together, which is pretty cool. And so, but it takes all this conduit and done because above this, once we pour the concrete, you know, there's there, this is a bathroom. This will be a bedroom. And there's nothing that you can just run the conduit straight up through the floor. Otherwise, uh, you know, it'll, it'll actually be stained concrete. So it all has to be done 
in the slab uh, instead of on top of it after we do it. And this is where I almost forgot the uh, shower. So I put it in, I just, I was just going fast and I knocked out the toilet. I'm like, okay, toilet's in. And I put an air vent for the uh, toilet in. And, uh, and I go, oh, wait a minute. There's a shower that goes right here for this bedroom. So the shower sits right here in this corner. And I'm like, I've got it now off of this. I'm gonna run a shower drain over to here. And in the concrete, I'll be putting a P-trap so that when the water drains, it has to roll through the P-trap so that no smells come up through here. So it all has to be done in the, in the concrete. Like, whereas over there, uh, we did the in-slab uh, shower for the pool, the pool bath. You know, we, had, we were able to uh, leave a, a knockout in the foundation so we can come back and move the shower just right and get the drain placement correctly. Here, when we pour the concrete, I'm gonna actually put the drain in right now. And so the drain's going in and I'll tape it off. And so when they pour the concrete, they'll actually put a slope down to the drain. So that's what we gotta do. And I almost forgot it. I was like, oops. <laughs> I just noticed it like, uh-oh, that'd have been bad. Mike, so this is obviously, this is the ceiling of the bottom floor. When we pour this, the concrete will be this thick. It's really thick slab that's going across. So this is set at exactly nine foot two and a half. And those beams out there are set at 10 foot three and a half. So this slab here, when it's poured, the wood framing that goes out here in the structure it will come right together. And everything was set for the right height so that when this is done, it'll come on out and it'll roll straight on out to those beams. So when I'm standing right here, this, is, this will be the new elevation of our floor in the house we walk in on the first floor and this is going to walk straight out to those beams level but we even planned it in better because those beams are part of the porch and when rain comes on the porches you want the, the water to shed away from the house so I actually those beams are sitting down i planted in an extra three inches below grade so we're going to have to add two two by sixes on top of those beams to raise it up in, in inside the house so when you walk outside you have a a step down so we're adding tile on the porch and all that so including the height of the tile and the and the back the hardy backer board and the grout that we put the tile out there we'll still have about an inch inch and a half of a drop when you come out of the door onto the porch so that any water rains on it it sheds away from the house but we all had everything's planned as far as these heights to get from this concrete height to immediate transition to the wood flooring that comes in and it'll be a, a smooth transition without any without any uh, step down at least that's the plan. That's what I measured on the plans. And so I had everything's designed and these guys were very meticulous in setting these heights. So it'll go all the way straight across. That's the plan. I think I think we can actually start the framers up top here once it's cured. Okay. I don't want to put any weight on this. Right. I don't want to stack any piles of plywood because this thing should cure for two weeks. But they can start working up here. Yeah, just walking on it. Yeah, just walking and set the boards up and they can frame this entire section of the house. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And then they could frame out here. They could frame it all. They just can't do the uh, the beams. Yeah. So what we'll do is I'll probably see if they want to start Friday. Okay. And that way it gives them some time. We'll let it cure a little bit. Us maneuver maneuver the wood around. Get it out of the way of Shannon. And then we can also take down this back stuff. Yeah. Uh, to get it out of the way. But yeah, they can totally start on this. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna ask them to come out tomorrow or or, uh, or Wednesday. Just to kind of give you a, kind of a, a better call, idea. Kind of a pre-con meeting. Yeah. Get it all down. All right. Is that cool if I stay under and brace and do all that? You do you. All right. You, whatever you're doing is gonna be helpful. Like Boone, you know the uh, kind of the plan, right? We're just adding more beams. Pretty much as soon as Big Mike is done framing up this wall here. Um. Depending on weather, it might have you guys help them help with steel, but then we all have to, you know, brace. Nothing's easy. Not a good job site. Nothing's easy.
See now we're done on the height. That should be good. I'm not trying to follow you, Mike. Try to get some rebar, Mike. Steer your shell and then get it out of the way. Um, and then we also have to clean the slab off once, right. technically. So, yeah, that'll take it half a day. Yeah, yeah. half a day, take this stuff down this side of it, or out of the way, and then all this interior stuff, it's got to stay for two, three, two, three weeks anyhow. Mm -hmm. Really, three, almost a month for a full concrete curing, because it's got to hold all this weight. Okay. And then, um, I was going to talk to the con the uh, framer dudes, get them out here and talk to them about lifts and staging and everything. Okay. Because wood down here, we could set wood on the slab if we can get it over here, take those poles down and drive yeah. it in. Mm -hmm. we, with a big 10,000 pound sky lift, we can set the wood in here for them. Sure. And this stuff is nine foot ceilings. This stuff up here is 11 foot ceilings. Okay. And so the wood is actually staged up there in, in order. Is so, it? Okay, well, that's good. Pseudo. Right. So the, the, the roofing material and the last stuff we need is in the very back. Okay. So it is organized a little bit. Okay. I tried. Good. I tried. And uh, Mike and uh, Shannon are knocking out beam after beam. Okay. Good. So it's going fast. Oh, um, so the top of that thing is uh, holding up the last part of the uh, batter boards. Uh, if you look at it, uh, all the bracing on there only went up so high. Uh, the rest of it was just kind of left unsupported, so I put that on the other day to hold it up so it didn't tilt back whenever we pour the top part of it. Now pull that back a little bit, square it up. Nine foot six is where this should stop and your board should come out six inches. And the rock lug will come right up through here. Make sense? Well, here, then cut yep. across. Yep, yep. That'll so, be the space right there as well, though. So, yep. So technically, a six-inch rock lug is ideal, but I mean, you can be at you can be at seven. So you put your batter board face right on here. Mm -hmm. That comes on up. We've got a, a rock lug, and so it'll hang out that that extra half inch, whatever it is. It'll okay. six. So we'll overhang it. We're going to pour it this tall. We'll backfill dirt underneath it, and then the driveway will come in here, or the walkway will come into here, around. The rock will here come up on the side of it. not really strong enough so we're gonna have to add a few more braces in here uh, but I'm only gonna go with a single 2x6 instead of the uh, doubles like these um, just to kind of give it a little bit more because the way Doug describes it there's gonna be uh, enough weight to equal three what is it three skid steers like bobcats to be parked up on the top but I don't know if that's dry weight or what so nails are cheap so here you go we're making Mike's house. And then you got a board like that, you know, pop your nails in, eat wood glue and pop it in. Now you got an eight foot structural member. This board is now as good as a one you bought for $9. But I'm tossing this because it's, you know, when we're, we're building this volume of a house, we don't have time 
to come along and lay the glue out and go pop, 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 pop with the nails, make it all nice and strong. We're grabbing boards and going up, up, up boards. And so, you know, that this is time consuming. But if you're bored on a weekend, you can be out here with your nail gun and glue and making all the structural members for your, your place. And then like what I did in there uh, with those, those glue lamps. So I bought the glue. So if you notice on the glue lamps, I've got, take all the scrap wood we have. I mean, you keep it going. And this is how you make a structural member in your house. So you take all the scrap. It's all going in the dumpster. Then you take another piece of scrap and you make sure it overlays like this. And you use the glue, do another one, you know, that oh, it stops here, right? And then you do another one, it keeps on going. So eventually you do enough layers and a couple nails in it, layers and nails, and you do it X high. And all of a sudden now you can make an A-frame structure out of enough boards. And that's how you can get free lumber for your house. And you can build an, an, an awesome, I can already see it, it'd be an A-frame that goes across, side structure, and then you can do some interior walls. The only expensive thing is, is the foundation. And technically, you don't even have to do the foundation. You can make it out of wood. In Texas, we do foundations because it's so cheap, because the concrete is, is cheap. But if you get a relatively flat piece of land and you don't do what we did here, <laughs> do the exact opposite of what we did here for make it cheap, you come along and you pretty much, you only want about eight inches of exposure. So it's completely flat and you just take a, a two by 12 and you just kind of frame it up on the outside, run a couple plumbing runs. You can come in there with a concrete truck without the pump truck, keep it cheap. You just back the truck in and they dump it in. You put a little bit of steel, the scrap steel we're probably gonna throw away and you can have a foundation. I mean, I'm just saying. I don't need a gym. 
Oh, he's called by Dog. Oh, he's that's funny. <laughs>